So let's take a look at uh, some chemical reactions and what we need to know for the exam. So it looks like we got five questions that we'll try to be able to answer through this video. Um, two atoms that have different electronegativity values. What type of bond is that? Um, polar covalent bonds. Uh, what do the subscripts represent in uh, chemical equations? Difference between endothermic and exothermic reactions. And then a pH question as it relates to ions. Okay, doesn't sound too bad. Uh, so let's go through a little intro here um, before we get into the bonds. Uh, elements are substances that cannot be broken down into other substances. Compounds are substances made up of molecules containing atoms of different elements. And inorganic substances do not contain carbon. Organic substances do. Okay bonds. So ionic bonds and covalent bonds. So the, the ionic and covalent bonds show up in a couple of these videos uh, and all that should really, like if you're watching a lot of these videos, is all that should really suggest to you is like it's probably going to show up on the test, right? If it if it's a some if it's a concept that shows up two, three, four different times in different videos, uh, it's probably going to show up on the test at least once. So it's an important to be able to know the difference. Okay, so you can recognize ionic compounds because they consist of a metal bonded to a nonmetal. Ionic bonds form between two atoms that have different electronegativity values. Okay, let me say that one more time because it's important. Ionic bonds form between two atoms that have different electronegativity values. I believe there was even an ionic bond question. What time of bond forms between two atoms that have different electronegativity values? So, right, just basic, like, textbook definition. That's an ionic bond. Because the ability to attract electrons is so different between the atoms in ionic bonds, it's like one atom donates its electron to the other atom in the chemical bond. Okay, and then what about covalent bonds? Covalent bonds are formed between non-metal atoms. And remembering that with an ionic bond, it was a metal bonded to a nonmetal. Here with covalent bonds, two nonmetals. Each of the atoms involved in bonding contribute one, two, three, or more electrons to form the shared pair. Hydrochloric acid is an example of a covalent bond. A very, very common one. Uh, a chemical reaction involves the rearranging of atoms of the same or different elements to form new substances. It is represented by a chemical equation in which the reactants, substances that are broken apart, are written on the left, and the products, which are new substances that are formed, are written on the right. If more than one reactant or product is needed, they are separated with a plus sign. An arrow is used to separate the reactant side of the equation from the product side. And so we'll get into this in a minute where we'll do a bunch of uh, different types of equations and we can see what they look like. A water molecule, abbreviated as you all know as H2O, is an example, example of a polar covalent bond. The electrons are unequally shared with the oxygen atom spending more time with electrons than the hydrogen atoms. Since electrons spend more time with the oxygen atom, it carries a partial negative charge. Okay, I think we had a polar covalent question, didn't we? Right, what is a polar covalent bond? Give an example, right? So we just gave that example of H2O with electrons being unequally shared. And then nonpolar bonds. Those involve electrons being shared equally with a molecule. Ionic bonds involve the transfer of electrons. Okay. All right, so as we get into chemical reaction, again, reactants are the inputs in a chemical equation, products are the resulting outputs. Um, subscripts represent how many atoms or ions. Are in one molecule and so again that's important uh, you just need to be able to know that generally it's something that we should be familiar with um, 
subscripts represent how many atoms or ions are in one molecule, right? And so, for example, the uh, the subscript NO3 indicates that there are three oxygen atoms in each nitrate ion. Okay, so as we move on here, so we have all these these chemical reactions, right? Um, and so we're going to look at single displacement reaction, double displacement reaction, decomposition reaction, uh, direct combination reaction, and then finally combustion. Okay, so we'll go through these one at a time. From the top, single displacement reaction is a chemical reaction where one reactant is exchanged for one ion of a second reactant. So single replace, sorry, single displacement reactions take the form A plus BC equals B plus AC. That's the form that they come in. So the reaction between zinc metal and hydrochloric acid to produce zinc chloride and hydrogen gas would be an example of a single displacement reaction. And then we can see that formula for the equation uh, down below there. Moving to a double displacement reaction, these are type of reactions in which two reactions exchange ions to form two new compounds. Double displacement reactions take the form AB plus CD equals AD plus CB. The reaction between silver nitrate and sodium chloride is a double displacement reaction. The silver trades its nitrate ion for the sodium's chloride ion, causing the sodium to pick up the nitrate anion. Uh, we're looking at next decomposition reactions. Uh, these occur when a reactant molecule is broken down into its component parts. It makes sense, exactly what it sounds like, right? Decomposition reactions take the form AB equals A plus B, or AB results in A plus B the electrolysis of water into oxygen and hydrogen gas is an example of a decomposition reaction. A direct combination reaction has two or more chemical species combined to form a more complex product with A plus B resulting in AB. The combination of iron and sulfur to form iron sulfide is a direct combination reaction that you can see and finally one more uh, combustion reactions in the most general sense involve a reaction between any combustible material and an oxidizer to form an oxidized product it usually occurs when a hydrocarbon reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water for example the combustion of methane is represented with the equation that we see down at the bottom of the screen. All right. And then we want to look at endothermic and exothermic reactions. Okay, so endothermic is any chemical reaction that absorbs heat from its environment. Um, baking bread or an egg solidifying are common examples of endothermic reactions. While exothermic reactions involve the energy usually being transferred as heat energy, causing the reaction mixture and its surroundings to become hotter. So examples of exothermic reactions could be a burning candle. Uh, that would probably be the most common one. And then we also want to be familiar with activation energy, and that is the amount of energy needed to get a reaction going. Starting a fire would be an excellent example of activation energy. So we want to be familiar with these three as well as with like those examples that I just gave would be like if there was a, a question with an example, like pretty likely it would be something like starting a fire is an example of which type of energy. And then quickly we have uh, acids and bases and the pH scale. So we want to know that the pH scale goes from 0 to 14. Anything between 0 and 7 is acidic. Anything above 7 is basic or alkaline. Exactly 7 is considered neutral. So something like 2.5 would be considered very acidic. Remember that pH is related to the balance of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. So a pH below 7 
uh, represents an excess of hydrogen ions, and a pH above 7 represents an excess of hydroxide ions. Okay, and so as we get into our questions again, uh, we've gone over uh, each of these, and uh, so now really the best thing, hit that pause button uh, and test yourself, see if you can answer these questions. If anything looks confusing, go back into the video and find the answer.